Hi! In this video, we will go over the basics on how to create your own custom Man vs. Machines missions. For this task, we can either use mvm.tf or write the thing ourselves. Current tutorial series will be dedicated to writing missions with Notepad++, though it's also possible to use Visual Studio code. Missions in Tiamverse 2 are made as pop files, which are population files that the game reads for all the robots setting up and spawning needs. First things first, we have to get our tools. Download Notepad++ from the site and get that syntax highlighter. As everything is downloaded, create a new text file anywhere and rename it into that pop file. And then open it with Notepad. Then set up the highlighter by heading to the language, define your language, and import downloaded XML file. That should enable the highlighting for all the pop files that you will make. Alright, that should be enough for setting up. As for creating the mission, decide on what map you would like to make your mission. You can create mission for any MVM map, whether it's official or community made. Also check if there's enough file for the map, as that is necessary for bots to navigate around it. All Valve maps should have nav by default. For this tutorial, we will be making mission for decoy. You can find maps in the map folder in game's files and check how they are named. Then navigate to the scripts and then population folder of the game. That's where the missions are stored. If you don't have these folders, create them. Also, I should note that there are robot templates, pop files, that will be kinda useful. If you don't have those, you could extract them with GCF space from game's VPK into that folder. Create pop file in the population folder and then name it. The way it should be named is map name underscore your mission name. Do not use spaces. In our example it is mvm underscore decoy underscore nice underscore mission underscore name underscore here. Dot pop. Open up the mission file with notepad. Before writing the thing, let's go over a little bit of theory on how the things here work. Top of the file which contains spaces which connect our pop file to the template libraries from which you could pull custom bots. Mostly you'll be using the robot standard and robot giant. Robot gatebot also can be used in case if you're making mission for maps with gates. After that, there's wave schedule, which contains all the mission related key values in its body, or the space enclosed in its curly brackets. Inside of it are the setup key values, like starting money. Then missions, which specify what special bots will appear during some of the waves, like sentry busters, spies, snipers, and engineers. After that, there are waves, each specifying the wave spawns, what bots spawn in it, how many, where, how much money they drop, and all that. And basically, that is it. Majority of the things explained in stupid basics. Alright, now let's write our first mission and get a little bit more in detail. Just to make sure that highlighter works, select it from the language drop down menu. Let's start by writing wave schedule and specifying the initial key values. One of them is starting currency, which allows you to set starting money for the mission. You can set it as high or low as you want. Negative money won't work though, and setting it too high may result in clients crashing. Up next is respawn wave time, which specifies in seconds amount of time that it takes for players to respawn. And then can bots attack while in spawn room. It uses zero or no to disable bots shooting at people while walking from the spawn room, but where they're invincible. Setting it to anything else will make bots attack players while walking from their spawn. If some of these key values are not specified, they will be set to their default values. Of course, it's not all key values that can be specified here. To view a full list of those, I'll link the key value documentation in video's description. Also note that some of the things there either don't work or work in weird ways. Next, let's write the wave and then include start wave output and done output inside. What those things do is activate map logic when the wave begins and once it ends. To make those work, set up target and action key values for them. When wave starts, you want to target wave start relay and action trigger to trigger it, which will clear the bot path holograms for the map, and once the wave ends, set target to wave finish relay and trigger it so map logic will randomly select a new bot path and enable the holograms that show it. You can check how those relays work in game by entering the end fire console command. These relays must be present on any MVM map. Up next, let's actually add bots to spawn in the wave. 
at the wave spawn. Set up the following key values. Where select the spawn point for bots to spawn from. Most common one is spawn bot, though there are some variations on some of the maps like spawn points specifically for mission bots. Like spawn bot mission sniper. You can check spawn point names and locations in game by enable developer mode and then inputting and name info player team spawn and map show spawn points in the console. Total count sets up the total amount of bots that will be spawned. Max exif specifies maximum amount of bots that can be exif on the map at once. Maximum amount of bots is 22 and that number must be shared between all wave spawns. And about the maximum number, each bot counts as a player, maximum number of players on the server is usually 32, 6 slots for players, 4 for spectators and the rest for bots. Spawn count is the amount of bots that will be spawned each time bots spawn. It must not exceed the max exif. Wait before starting is a time in seconds that must pass before bots start spawning after this wave spawn becomes active. Wait between spawns is a time in seconds that must pass between every bot spawn. Total currency is the amount of money that will be dropped from all the bots in this wave spawn. Money is divided between all bots, so 100 money with 10 total count will result in each bot from that wave spawn dropping 10 money. After all of this is specified, Add the TV bot spawner, which will allow you to specify what bot you want to spawn in this wave spawn. Inside of it specifies the class you want the bot to be, which can be Scout, Soldier, Pyro, Demoman, Heavy or Spy. Engineer, Sniper or Medic will behave in weird ways if you spawn them like that so. Also you can specify the skill of the bot. Those can be Easy, Normal, Hard and Expert. Those skill levels correspond with difficulty levels in the training mode, and they control how precise bot's aim is and some more functions like air blast rate of pyros. You can read up more on that in Six Saves guide. For now, the should cover the basics of TV bot spawner. I'll get more into bot customization in future videos. Up next, launch Team Fortress 2, open the console and send max players 02 and enable the CV cheats, and launch the map for which you're making the mission. After spawning in, call a vote to change the mission. If you did everything right, your mission name should appear in the vote menu. Now you can check if everything works as intended. If you want to test the full mission solo, you can give yourself god mode and some more money with currency gift console command. Though, note that you can't really decide how to balance normal EVM mission by doing it solo with cheats. For that you will need a team. You can enable no clip to fly in the bot spawn area and check if their spawns are correct or if the bots are getting stuck. But I guess just have mind type of bots is boring, isn't it? Let's get back in Notepad and add in another wave spawn. Feel free to copy paste the previous one and edit it. I guess now would be the time to explain how to use templates. Open template profile with Notepad and take a look inside. There you can find the valve bots with different item sets and attributes. If you want to quickly search for specific bot class, use Ctrl F search. Also, if you do plan to use a template, don't forget to import templates pop file with the base at the top of the file. Now you can import a template in your TF bot. Do it by using template key value and copy paste the bot's template name. Now you can check the changes in Team Fortress 2. To reload the pop file, just use the TF MVM jump to wave console command. In the same way as before, you can add more bots to your wave. Don't forget the 22 max active advanced bot limit. In case if you want to make sub waves, where some bots are spawning after a certain QA spawn got fully spawned or killed, you can use wait for all spawned or wait for all dead key values inside wave spawn. They work in the way that wave spawn will not be active until another wave spawn, which is specified in the key value, is fully spawned or dead. For that to work, you need to name wave spawn that needs to be dead. Use name key value on that wave spawn and name it however you want, and set same name in the wait for all spawned or wait for all dead. Now that will make a chain of wave spawns that will become active one after another. You also can name two wave spawns the same name, and then wait for all spawned or wait for all dead will wait for all these wave spawns to spawn or die. As for making another wave, just put a new wave and do the same things as we did before. Make sure you didn't write wave inside of another wave though. And now I could touch up on the missions. Missions are special populators like wave spawn but they are usually specified before the waves. Bots that spawned in missions behave differently, and they count as support bots that don't need to be killed for the wave to be over. What mission bots will do is defined by their objective. 
Objectives include Sniper, Spy, Engineer and Destroy Sentries. Sniper will make bots camp at the sniper spots. Spy will teleport bots around the map to custom mischief. Engineer will spawn engineers that occupy sentry nests specified on the map. And destroy sentries are the sentry busters. Not specifying destroy sentries mission would make it so no sentry busters will spawn. Key values here are named a little bit differently than in wave spawn. Initial cooldown is time in seconds that must pass since wave start until the first spawn of mission bots. Where is still where? Begin at waves specifies from which wave current mission bots will start appearing. Run for this many waves is the amount of waves in which these bots will appear, starting from wave specified in begin at wave. Desired count is basically max active and spawn count combined. Cool down time is basically wait between spawns. After all the setup, get the TF bot spawner and specify the needed bot. Sentry Buster template can be found in Robot Giant Pop with a demo man class. And now let's get to tanks. Tanks should be specified with a tank spawner instead of TF bot inside of wave spawns. These got their own set of key values. In case of anything, feel free to check how those things are set up in other pop files. Though if you're copying things over from community mission and it's almost major, I'd suggest giving it credit to the original after. Tanks use health key value to set their health, which is usually 15,000 at minimum. They also got their speed specified in hammer units. In our example, it is 75. Tanks can have a name given to them. It is needed for the map to correctly kill it when it deploys the bomb. Or some other map side stuff. Starting path track node works like a where, but for tanks. For that you have to specify the name of the path track where it will spawn. If you specify it wrong, then the tank will spawn on the start of the first set of path tracks that it will find. To find names of path tracks in game, you can use developer1 mode and look for path track name with end name path track console command. Then, like wave outputs, tanks can trigger map relays if they get destroyed with on killed output that isn't really used on valve maps, or when they drop the bomb with on bomb dropped output, and that is required to properly fail the wave once bomb is deployed by the tank. And now for a little bit more of bot stuff. You can set up multiple wares and then enable a random spawn key value to make bots spawn at random spawn points that you have specified. We also can use usual bots as support, not only mission ones. Just set the support one in the wave spawn and that will make this wave spawn the endless support. Those bots can still drop money, but only a number of total count bots will drop money after a while other bots will stop dropping it. If you want to have bots that aren't required to be killed for the wave to end, at neither end of some of them, use support limited instead. And about troubleshooting. If you've made an error, console will print out some of them. For example, here I've set up the non-existent spawn bot mission sentry buster for the sentry buster mission and inserted wave spawn into wave spawn. I was tired, okay? So now we can navigate around the pop file and see what we did wrong and fix it. And voila! All things work now. And that concludes the MVM Mission Making Basics. Feel free to leave your feedback or questions in the comments.